everyone, it's Love and Treasure here, and welcome to this week's little gaming video. Okay, first and foremost, up front, I am terribly sorry about the lack of videos for the last two days. We actually had a guest come stay with us for a few days that just kind of needed some time away, and we wanted to spend as much time with them as possible. But then I want to get right back into it, and I was trying to think of a game that I really wanted to play, and there's so many freaking games that I got to get to. Oh my gosh, like I still got to get to the suggestions from you guys, from the Discord server and everything. I was actually looking for a game that I wanted to play for this week, and I found this. It's called The Mortician's Tale, and apparently it's a more happier side to death, and I'm not exactly sure what the story is, but it, it looks like we play as a mortician that has to prepare, you know, certain, uh, uh, certain things, you know, to kind of move over and pass on and stuff like that and it looks really it looks really fantastical and it looks really spiritual so and it and it's really calm and, and serene like I'm really liking the intro here the music is beautiful and the falling petals and everything is just like it looks gorgeous it just looks gorgeous so I'm gonna go ahead and get into a new game and we're gonna go through this story together September 14th yeah, it's my brother's birthday, 10, 15 a.m. Ooh, very nice. I like the layout. Okay. Hello. Uh, how, how to move. Do I just need to click? Oh, okay. It's a click style game. Okay, cool. All right. So we got some mail. Oh, my gosh. This mortician is beautiful. She kind of reminds me of Abby from an NCIS. There you go. Oh, hello. Welcome, Charlie. Nice to meet you. My name's Matthew, and I'm mainly going to be the man who delivers the bodies to you and helps with some of the more heavy lifting. Ever hear the joke about the hearse driver? <laughs> I'll tell it to you when I come by in a bit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Looking forward to working together. I think you'll enjoy working here. Amy is a sweetheart, but she runs a tight ship. Nothing you can't handle, I'm sure. She's She wouldn't have hired you otherwise. I love this guy's accent. Cheers and good luck, Matthew J. Funeral director, director Rose and Daughter's Funeral Home. Hello and welcome to our uh, welcome to our new funeral director. Wait, is that what I am? Hold on, my name is Amy. Charlie. No, my name is Charlie. Wait, is that me, Charlie? Oh, okay. Amelia Rose, founder and director. Okay, so we can just kind of like get to know these characters a little bit here. I want to know what my name is. Who am I? Am I Charlie or am I someone else? Charlotte. Okay. From Amy Rose to Rose and Daughters staff. Hello, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our new funeral director, Charlotte, or Charlie, as she told me she likes to be referred to. Charlie is a recent graduate who came highly recommended and is eager to begin her career here with us at Rose and Daughters Funeral Home. Please take the time to make Charlie feel at home within our little family. We'll have a nice catered lunch this afternoon so we can all get to know each other a little better as well. Sincerely, Amy Rose. Oh, she sounds like such a sweetheart. Okay. All righty. And then uh, let's see, this is just, this can just tell us a little bit about what we do here. Cool, all right. Well, I mean, I already know what we do here, but I mean, you know, it, it's kind of gives you like the mood for this place, you know, like are they upbeat people or are they really past? Anyway, okay. <laughs> Amelia Rose, founder and director about Rose and Daughters. Rose and Daughters Funeral Home was founded by my grandparents back in 1956. The Rose family has proudly served the area since then, providing personal affordable funeral services for all. I'm proud to have carried on my family's business for the last 36 years, working with the best and brightest funeral directors and grief. Oh, there's a C missing there. Uh, counselors in the area. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you've recently experienced a loss and would like us to help you through this hard time. Oh, how sweet. You have to be really, really good with people when it comes to a career like this. You have to be really, really personable. Here at Rose and Daughters Funeral Home, we're committed to providing loved ones with the best and most affordable funeral services in the area. We offer a diverse range of personalized funeral services, optionals, options, excuse me, <laughs> optionals, uh, to fit every need. Prices, burial with an open casket, $59.85. I knew that they were really expensive, but whew. Burial with closed casket, $42.75. Cremation. With ceremony and reception, 1700 Direct burial with no ceremony or reception, 1905 Direct cremation with no ceremony or reception, 600 All-inclusive. Wow. Okay. 
We also offer custom packages to suit every budget and need. Please do not hesitate to contact contact us with any questions at blah 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 dot com. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Um. Okay. Oh. All right. So here's my boss telling me what I need to do. Okay. Hello, Charlie. While you're new here, it is probably best that I explain where everything is in your office slash preparation area. <laughs> preparation. Um. Let's see. You'll find. You'll find your cremation station. Crematorly cream cremulator? Cremulator? Did I did I say that right? Cremulator station? Embalming station. And obviously, since you're reading this email, your desk and computer area. I know you have experience working in these in these stations, but please let me know if you have any questions. Best Miss Amy Rose. Okay. Jen Love. From Jen Love to Charlie. Museum curator. Ooh, nice. Huh. <clears throat> I guess my subject line is you should start being more professional <laughs> now that we are quote unquote business professionals. I can't wait to get your reply so I can see your fancy new email signature. Ooh, my so fancy. <laughs> I really like it that you can actually customize your signature when you're sending out emails. That makes you look a lot more professional. <laughs> It's really interesting. Anyway, I love that you are able to land this gig straight after graduating. It sounds super cool. I didn't even know mom and pop funeral homes were a thing now. A thing until now. Guess it's not just something I really think about much. I should look more into this, learn more about your world and industry because, I, as I said, you are now a very serious professional. Very serious. I take my job very seriously. Speaking of being a professional, my museum gig is amazing. I can't believe somebody paid me to move to London and not London, um, Ontario, excuse me, serial killer capital of Canada to work in a museum. <laughs> okay. Um, like, take that everyone who said I couldn't get a job with an art history degree. I'll tell you more about it when we Skype. My stories require you to see my face and you hear my excellent British accent impersonation. Also, I signed you up for Funeral's monthly newsletter. Consider it your graduation gift. I love you. I am so proud of you. Gift. Love you, love you, love you. Jen. Okay, so that has to be my best friend because good lord, that's a lot of love yous. <laughs> <laughs> and is like, oh, that's so cute. I, I like her already. She's one of my favorites. And hey, she got an art history degree. That's awesome. I graduated with an art degree. Not an art history degree, but an art degree. And I had to take a lot of art history classes. But, eh, you know. <laughs> so I can relate to Jen. Okay. From Amy Rose. Today's tasks. Um, okay. Let's read this first. So, oh my goodness. This looks like a lot. Okay. 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 Dear Amy, we're happy to be with Rose and Daughters for my mo mother's funeral. We understand that there are usually that there are usually procedures that must be followed in these situations, but if you could kindly not embalm my mother, that would gr be greatly appreciated. And we will proceed with a closed casket for the service. I just know that she would have wanted her death to have to, uh, wouldn't have wanted her death to have any negative impact on the environment, and since she fought so hard to beat her heart disease and live healthily, it would be a shame to have her final moments be be counter to the way that she lived. Thank you for anything you can do to help us in this matter. Best Mia. Special request for my mother's funeral, so no embalming. Got it. Dear Mia, of course, we will happily oblige your request for no embalming and for a closed casket. I'll ensure our funeral director receives your request. Take care. Okay, there we go. We got our first gig of the day. So don't embalm the body. Got it. Okay. Hello, Charlie. Hope you're settled in okay so far. Matthew should have dropped off your first body, so you had to work uh, for you to work on. He said that you were really friendly, and he's glad to have someone young and lively to work with. You'll get used to his sense of humor. My first body is Mrs. Garcia, an elderly woman who died suddenly of a heart attack. The family has asked for a closed casket funeral, so no embalming or body preparation is necessary. The family seems a little bit united, a little bit more united than previous families we have dealt with. Strange how grief affects people differently. Perhaps having more time to say goodbye makes things a little bit easier if that's possible. That being said, although you will not be embalming Miss, Mrs. Garcia, I do think it's important to take the time to clean her body. No one is going to see her body, but I like to encourage my funeral directors to do this out of respect for the deceased and their loved ones. You'll find Mrs. Garcia in the prep room. Talk soon, Miss Amy Rose. Okay, 
So we're not going to embalm her. We don't need uh, to prepare her, but we can clean her. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, here we go. Uh, tips for a good funeral. Uh, tips for good etiquette at a funeral. Okay. Thanks for subscribing. Oh, yeah. She signed me up for this. This is funny. This is great. Oh, Jen, mwah, thank you so much for signing me up for this beautiful, momentous occasion. I am so excited for my first gig out of, out of college. Okay. I'm fresh meat. Pretty much. Pretty much. Fresh meat. Hold, hold on. Let me move this a little bit. There we go. Okay. Thanks for subscribing. Each month that we bring you a new uh, a new newsletter featuring a topic pertaining to the death industry, this month is all about good etiquette for attending a funeral. I really can't believe we have to write about this one, but since we said we answer your most popular questions, here we are. Because this is definitely one of the most popular questions. Funerals are a hard time, and we understand that. But here are some quick and easy rules to remember for being respectful at a funeral. Generally, following the guidelines of quote-unquote, don't be a jerk, should work. <laughs> uh, one, do not be on your cell phone. We understand you're busy, but this time, but this is a time and place to disengage. If you have to be on your cell phone, don't do so inside the funeral home. Don't be loud and obnoxious. You can share happy stories, but other people are, all, are also grieving and working through their own healing process. Being quiet gives other people space that they might need. Three, do not get drunk. Everyone can deal with their feelings in their own ways, but just remember to be respectful with the grieving family and their friends. Four, happy reminisce. Sometimes remembering happy moments and positive experiences with the disease can be a productive part of the healing process. Yes, that's very true. I've been to a lot of funerals where they have lots of uh, video footage of of like pictures, moving pictures and stuff like that of them. So it makes me cry every time. <laughs> um, give condolences. It's not easy knowing what to say to someone, but even a simple I'm thinking of you can go a long way. Dress appropriately. Um, what this looks like will change based on the customs of the deceased and their culture, but always dress in a way that shows respect to the deceased and their grieving family. Uh, eight, give a gift or sign their registration book. This can be flowers or a nice card, um, but it's the thought that counts here. Sometimes this can even go just by cooking dinner for the grieving family. Anything that shows you care and want to help them through the healing process is what matters here. Be kind and be helpful. You know, those that is really, really good sound advice. Because um, sometimes people might not always know what they need to do at a funeral. They don't know what always they need to say to somebody. Um, so that's actually really, really good advice. Oh, do I got a, a new mail? What's happening here? Something new? I just looked at... Oh, oh, I got to answer her. Okay, sure thing. I'll get right to it. There we go. Okay. So... This is, this is my, this is Mrs. Garcia over here. Okay, and we need to clean her. All right, easy enough, easy enough. Oh, this is the prep room where you'll be prep, uh, where you prepare bodies for burials and for viewings, okay. Because the family has requested a closed casket ceremony with no embalming, you are just going to clean the body, okay. Click on the sponge and drag it over the body to clean it. Okay, there's a sponge. Oh, okay. There we go. I'm gonna get all the spots here, Mrs. Garcia. All the spots. I wanna make sure you're nice and tidy. There we go. That's it, you're done. Mrs. Garcia will be sent to Mike who will take care of the dressing and putting her in the casket, okay? It's time to go to Mrs. Garcia's funeral. You are responsible for taking care of the deceased bodies, but it is also important to pay your respects to their loved ones. Oh. Follow the arrow to head to the funeral parlor. Okay, so I do have to say something to them? Oh boy. All right, well, here we go. Hope I don't screw up. Oh, I look really lovely in my nice black dress. Okay, hello. Okay, well, let's go ahead and start here. There's a registration book. She would have hated these paintings. She was so particular. Yeah, at least she doesn't have to see them, I guess. That's, yeah, I guess. Okay. Uh, okay, do I have to talk with just everybody? Or am I, 
Uh, do I have to say anything? Maybe not. I don't know. Okay, well, let's go here. Let's say hello to you. I kind of look like Wednesday from Adam's family. We usually don't small talk at a lot of these things. At least that's what I was always taught. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I understand that. Feel free to grieve, sir, in your own way. I hate wearing pantyhose. My legs are so itchy, but it's always so cold in these funeral homes. I think I might actually miss those sweaters she used to knit for me now. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, and there's a little kid, I'm guessing. Hello. Mommy, I'm hungry. Can we go? Well, there's some food right there on the table, my bro, my dude. Yeah, I heard the family spe uh, specifically said no embalming. I thought it was mandatory, like required by law, but I guess not. Embalming weirds me out. Those, Do those chemicals leach into the ground? Seems strange to be using a chemical that is known to cause cancer and putting it in the ground like that. Or into the sewer. That's what they do with most of the leftover formaldehyde, right? Just pour it down the drain? At least embalming guarantees you won't be buried alive. Ew. Dis disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Don't make me laugh right now. Oh, good lord. Okay, well, let's go up to the casket. Does it? Is it just naturally gold like that? Oh, I just do a simple bow. Okay. All right, and um, that can go in here. It doesn't seem like I had to respond to anybody. It kind of looks like I just needed to talk. Okay. October eleventh. Okay, so we skip ahead a month. Fair enough. All right, and I'm cleaning the table. Okay, ooh, new email, new email. Let's go see what the new email says. Oh, it's my favorite. It's my my Jenny girl, my Jenny girl. Oh, I love this one. Okay, hello. Ooh, oh my. I wonder if we, I wonder if we're gonna get like another little story, like another little side story with Jen. On this, I don't know. That's gonna be interesting. Okay. Can I rant to you for a second? I'm so tired of hearing strangers, colleagues, anybody, <coughs> male colleagues, <coughs> get on my case for wearing corsets. I wear them under my blazer and over a nice blouse. So it's not like I'm dressing inappropriately, even though the dress codes are such sexist BS anyway. And like, I hate how their misogyny gets viled in faux concern. Jen, I just, I was just worried that you're damaging your body. You know what corsets do to your livers, right? Corsets don't do anything to livers. <laughs> They're definitely not hurting me as much as your condensation is hurting my head. Ugh, sorry, I'm out of sores right now. I'll send you another email in a little bit when I've cooled off a bit. Love yous. <laughs> love yous. <laughs> I love this girl. Okay, so let me explain this in a little more detail. A colleague and I were discussing the tight leasers liver specimen that we have here at the museum. It was from a woman who died in 1907 and the liver is tapered inwards from when the doctor leading the autopsy believed it was too tight lacing. It was due to the too tight lacing on her corset. It's fascinating because it's kind of a controversial topic. Tight lacing was super popular and when people associate it with fainting or hysteria, it's because it's actually been associated with viscera which is excuse me which is when the organs fall to the lower part of the abdomen right which is super unsettling but can also be caused by being pregnant so uh, uh tldr i don't remember what that stands for I, i'm such an old lady i don't remember what text lingo is of course that's probably messed up some bones but likely didn't do this kind of internal organ damage and i'm tired of the condensation from Conden yeah, condensen condensate condensation <sighs> about my wardrobe that also implies that I don't know what I'm doing. These are the kinds of things I specifically research and yet I'm treated like I know nothing about. I'm having a day, Charlie. Love you. <laughs> I love her. I'm so frustrated right now. Okay, there's my next job. Uh let's see here. Ouch. Ooh, what's this? Funerals monthly. We all know everyone wants to be respectful at funerals. Don't talk too loudly, be kind, smile, and refrain from making inappropriate jokes, at least around the grieving family. Hey, sometimes some people do need a little bit of a pick-me-up during such hard times, so who are we to judge? And a big part of that is knowing what to wear. Roman Catholic funerals tend to lean more towards the formal black attire rule, and it works for us. Did you know that this goes back to the days of the Roman Empire when people were 
would wear black as a symbol of mourning. Black isn't universally the symbol of mourning, though, and if you're attending a funeral that is from a culture that is not your own, it's important to understand this. Some colors have different meanings, and despite your best intentions, the wrong choice can mean the accidental offense. For example, in Hinduism and in Chinese cultures, this is really fascinating, by the way, white is typically... I remember that. I remember reading that somewhere. That is really interesting. White is a typical color for the funerals. For Islam, though, it is less about the color you are wearing and more about how modestly you are dressed. Refrain from wearing any elaborate jewelry that, and be respectful of your behavior. For, and I'm so sorry, I don't, I, I never pronounce this word correctly. Sheik? Seek? I am so sorry. If, if someone out there knows how to properly pronounce that word, can you please let me know? Because I, I'm so sorry if I just mess it up. For Sikh funerals? I'm so sorry. I feel so terrible messing up that word. Um, color of the clothing isn't as important as it is dressing modestly and being able to appropriately sit cross-legged. Interesting. Okay. Um, actually, being respectful is just the number one rule for any funeral, no matter what, really. Remember that, and please don't hesitate to ask what it is and isn't appropriate to wear. If you are intending to, if you're attending to support a friend, family member, or a partner, this day is not about you. So be sure to do whatever you can to be respectful and supportive as possible, even if it means you are not wearing what you're used to wearing at a funeral, or even if it just means asking how you can how you can you appropriately show your respects how you can appropriately show your respects that you should not be in there but that's okay this is a really fascinating game so far i'm really liking this this is really nice it's just it's it's like it's about death but it's relaxing at the same time it's like you're just going about your job you're going about your day and it takes a really special kind of person to do this type of job someone who's really fascinated with it and somebody who's like really really passionate and dedicated to it it's but it's just like an everyday office job you know it, and there's nothing controversial about it whatsoever it's just it's you know it's a part of life it's, it's what happens you know it's so interesting i like it uh, hey there, Charlie. Mr. Matthew. I was driving around the other day, you know, taking our clients on their last trip around town. Oh, and I was thinking, strange, I know. Did I ever tell you the first time I, was, I went to a funeral? I was a teenager about to start university and a friend of mine was killed in a car accident totally out of the blue. Really tragic stuff. Messed me up. Messed me and my friends up real good. But so the big day, we all got into our best suits and dresses and packed ourselves into a few cars. There were lots of us, so we had at least three different cars full of us, like clown cars, you know? While we're in the uh, procession going to the cemetery, somebody in our car got a phone call from a friend in a different car. Turns out some asshat driver who doesn't know <laughs> to not get in the way of a procession drove through the intersection and smashed straight into our friend's car. Nobody was hurt, thank God. Oh, good, good. But can you imagine getting that call? Anyways, one of my friends is in the same car as me. The one who got the phone call hung up and started laughing. Just laughing her ass off in, <laughs> in that way that makes you not sure if you're really just crying or if you've got gone fully off the deep end. And she laughed and then we all started giggling because like, go figure, life is messed up sometimes, you know? It's, it's very ironic. It's very ironic. You're on your way to a funeral, you're on your way to the burial from a funeral and someone gets T-boned. <laughs> It's, it, that's ironic. It's a good thing that nobody died, but still, it's like, huh, that's out of the blue and weird and... <laughs> There's no moral, no point to the story, I guess. I just remember that story and wanted to tell you. <laughs> I love this guy. Because we work with death all the time and I still sometimes get off guard and get caught off guard by what, actually, but by what it actually means. Oh, before you get any ideas, this has nothing to do with why I became a funeral director. That decision came totally later and is nothing remark unremarkable. Somebody has to do it and I have a strong stomach, so why not? I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> okay, Amy Rose. Sincerely, thank you. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, Mia Garcia. Oh, let's see how she was, how she handled it. Let's see if, you know, she was satisfied. She seems like a really nice lady. Hi, Amy. Please pass along our deepest thanks to you and your staff for the wonderful job they did at my mother's funeral. It was really lovely. Our family was 
uh, so rarely gets together. It was nice seeing everyone come out for such a beautiful service. My son never gets to see his family. Also, it was incredibly kind of you to let us bring our own food in. Getting to share home-cooked meals, sharing stories, being there together, it was, it meant a lot. So what I'm saying is it was nice for everyone to be there like that, together in that way. And I know how much of that was due to the work of your staff, especially your funeral director. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mrs. Garcia. Thank you for making this difficult time easier for all of us. From Amy, just passing the message along. Thanks for the hard work, Charlie. Very sweet. Okay, what is my next job? Here we go. Hi, Charlie. Here are the instructions for your next body. You did a remarkable job on the first one. The family was very happy with you. No small feat, of course. Pleasing a grieving family isn't exactly the most comfortable of jobs. Your next job is a man named Mr. Duval, an elderly, uh, an elderly man, died of old age. Nothing fancy, just a standard funeral with embalming. You can reach out to his daughter Lizzie Duval if you have any questions. She's handling her father's passing as well as she can be expected. As always, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. P.S. Charlie, dear, please remember to wear proper embalming gear. Formaldehyde is extremely dangerous. I know I don't need to tell you, but my mat maternal instincts are hard to ignore. I promise I won't quote unquote mother you too much. Well, just a little. Ask Matthew, he knows. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's try this then, shall we? Oh, there we go. I am in my protective gear. Okay, Mr. Duval, here I come. I gotta clean you up, sir. Okay. Traditional burials typically require embalming, which preserves the body and prevents it from decomposing quickly. Okay. Unless the family requests otherwise, all traditional burials will use embalming. Let's start by cleaning the body. Okay, fair enough. I can do that. Let me grab the sponge. And I'll just go ahead and clean all the nastiness here. At first I thought those were maggots on his chest, but no, that's just hair. <laughs> He's a very hairy man. Why are their eyes open? Okay, there we go. Click on the razor and drag it over the body to shave. Okay. Hello, all right. I just gotta get rid of all of his hair. Okay. Okay. In order to break rigor mortis, you have to massage the body. Click and drag over the body to massage it. Okay. So I just start from the top, go to the bottom. Start from the top, go to the bottom. And start from the top and go to the bottom. Okay. The eyeballs deflate once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag an eye cap into each eye socket to give it shape. They deflate? What do you mean they deflate? That, really? That is weird. Okay, click and drag an eye cap. I, okay. Uh, let's see, into each eye socket to give it shape. To keep the eyes shut, you'll need to glue them. Dr click and drag the glue onto each eye. The mouth sags and hollows once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag a cotton ball into the mouth to give it shape. Uh, uh, click and drag the... Oh, wait. Sorry. Click and drag the needle. A needle. Oh. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, to keep the mouth from opening, you need to suture it shut. Click and drag the needle and thread to uh, draw through it. Okay. Huh. Click and drag the lotion all over the body to moisturize it. This prevents the skin from drying out. Okay. Embalming involves removing blood and replacing it with the preserving chemicals. Click and drag the scalpel over the neck to make an incision. Okay. And I'm gonna go here. Ooh. You're gonna need a tube for draining the blood. Click on the tube and drag it into the neck incision. Okay. Let's see. Cr uh, click and drag the cannula. 
canula that's what it's called and drag it onto the carotid carotid the carotid artery this is how you'll get the preserving chemicals into the bloodstream okay uh click and drag on the carotid artery okay there we go now you need to connect the embalming machine to the to the uh canula grab some additional tubing and drag it to the canula huh wait oh okay click the button on the embalming machine to turn it on In order to evenly distribute the chemicals, you'll have to massage them through the body. Click and drag over the body to massage it. Okay. So we start on this side. And we go down. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. And go to the chest. Man. Oof. Okay. Man. How fascinating. I knew that this was you know quite a process but wow and that's a lot of steps to learn and I might forget some of it <laughs> throughout the process but and I'm pretty sure you can get shit incorrect I'm pretty sure that this is just the tutorial stage okay great now let's sew up the incision all right I can do that Okay. Hello. What's down here? Almost done. Now you need to drain the organs of any remaining fluids. Click on the trocar, then click and hold on the andamin until the liquid has been drained. So that's the trocar. Okay. Okay. Just click and hold it. Click and hold it. Okay. I gotta hold. I gotta hold it longer. There we go. And you're done. Mike will take care of Mr. Duvall's makeup. Oh, okay, good. So as well as well as dressing and putting him in the casket. It is time to attend the funeral. Okay, very good. So he'll take care of him. All right, and here we go. We'll walk out this way. Oh, hello. Oh, there's quite a few more kids here. Okay, that character right there looks like um, moral oral. Looks like oral. <laughs> All right, let's go talk to these people first. Hmm. It came out of nowhere. I mean, it always sort of does, doesn't it? Yeah, one minute you're laughing, having fun, and then the next poof, that person is gone. Just like, gone. Yeah, it's weird to think about it for too long. Just staring, like staring at the sun. I start to feel a little fuzzy when I think about it. Hmm, so weird. How our bodies just stop working like that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this sounds really depressing. <laughs> It's so strange not seeing most people wearing white. White? Yeah, I think it's different f uh, different for different family members. I can't remember. I haven't gone to many traditional funerals. So mostly white, but like definitely not red, no matter what. <laughs> huh. Okay. Well, I... Well... I... I well, it might be... I, I wanna ha I'm gonna have to l look up this stuff because this is actually really fascinating to learn. I, I like learning about different cultures and how they handle things differently. It'll be really interesting to learn about. He always wanted to take his grandkids to the park, play catch. He loved playing catch. He threw a mean curveball, that's for sure. <laughs> Aww. Okay, little kid, what do you have there? Do you, are you on your tablet? Humming to himself. Okay, fair enough. Then let's go ahead and pay our respects to Mr. Duval. Thank you for letting me attend. Can I do anything else? Oh. Can I sign the book? D don't mind me. Okay. Alright. Well, I'm gonna go ahead out uh, here. I pay my respects and I talk to everybody. So, Alright. We made it through our next job. Awesome. Well, you know what? I think this is actually a perfect time to go ahead and call this episode here. So far, I'm really, really enjoying this as weird and morbid as that sounds i mean it says that it's a really nice take on death and the, the the process of death and you know getting things like ready and stuff you know for funerals i honestly thought that this was going to be more whimsical and more magical so far 
I, I, I'm really enjoying it, even if it's not whiz whimsical. It's being treated like it's an ordinary, everyday job. You know, it's just a part of life and it's just what you have to do as a person. Unfortunately, death is a part of life and there have to be some people out there that need to handle it. It's really nice to see this game handling this type of, this type of job and this type of career in a really healthy light. You know, it's not like harsh or it's not, you know, foreboding or it's not, um, it's not depressing, you know, it's just like, eh, you know, it's a part of life. Just, this is what happens. It's so strange, but at the same time, very enjoyable. Strange and enjoyable. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here. And if you if you guys wanna see more of this game, please let me know in the comment section below. And I'm actually really interested in continuing it. If you guys did like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna to subscribe to the channel for more content from myself, feel free to do so down below. Don't forget, we also have a Discord server. So if you wanna stop on in or pop on in and say hello, I will be there to greet you. And as always, thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you enjoyed today's little video. Don't forget to do awesome, be awesome, man. Stay awesome, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Bye. Bye.